Whether you're looking for bunks or no bunks, we've got them both right here head to head. Stay tuned and see how they stack up. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Vicious RV with yet another channel first, actually two channel first today. Um, I've been aware of the Chinook Dream Series travel trailers for a little while now. I've never had a chance to really get my hands on one in person and in depth. And whenever I see a new series like this, what I like to do is start with a couple basic floor plans like that conventional 26 foot no slide bunkhouse that everybody builds. Because, I, because everybody builds it, I think it's a really good barometer in comparison. But I had an awesome opportunity right here where I had a bunkhouse and a non bunkhouse stacked up side by side. So, uh, you know, you could kind of see that you can get this both ways. And as we go, uh, what I'm really going to do here is I'm gonna go on uh, what I feel is a personal pass-fail basis. Um, whereas normally I'm very, well, this might work for this person or that person. I'm gonna tell you what works for me personally, but I really would like to hear from you what you think about this. Now, um, this uh, company here, Chinook, maybe you haven't heard of them in the Tobal RV market, but they've been um, a, uh, a small but very respected name in motorized RVs for a while. And where I see here is they brought some of that um, motorized fit and finish and thickness to this camper right here. There's a couple areas though that give me some concerns. I think that those are actually a result of the fact that because they are bigger, thicker, heavier in some areas, it meant that maybe they didn't do some things like watch their cargo capacities as closely as maybe I think they should have. But, um, you know, that's that's just my opinion. I'm gonna let you know what I like, what I dislike, and I, I'd love to hear from you. What do you like, what do you dislike? And then let me know, what do you think of the Dream Series here? Um, you know, it just occurred to me, I had a stupid joke planned where Mr. Sandman brought me a dream, um, but I feel that time has passed. <laughs> now, quick housekeeping note. Um, I've only got one battery box here. I'm not at my home dealership, so my resources are a little more limited, and I'm trying not to be an inconvenience to the folks that work here every day. You know, they've still got things they've got to take care of. So I'm going to bounce through two trailers. I've got one battery box. One's going to be lit, one's not going to be lit. At the same time, that's going to give you a really good idea of how the uh, lighting package actually works in these things. So first, we're going to start with our bunk model. And again, this is that floor plan, that conventional 26 foot, no slide, well, 26 foot, you know, based off the model number, it's probably closer to 30 foot tip to tail. Anyway, just for, for clarity there. But like everybody and their brother builds it. So this is one of the best floor plans where you can compare side by side pricing. You can compare features. You know, it's an awesome litmus test. It's like whenever I go to a new restaurant, I'll get something generic like chicken fingers because if you can, if you screw up chicken fingers for 12 bucks, I ain't paying you 30 bucks for a steak. You know what I mean? Here's a major pass item for me, centralized air conditioning in this size camper. And one of the reasons I say that is another major pass plus factor. That is a full bedroom privacy wall with sliding door. So if you didn't have that central air giving you the nice cool air in here, uh, you'd be sweating to the oldies like Richard Simmons, as it were. Now, um, you know, everybody and their brother builds a layout like this. I'm going to come back and take a look at the storage here in just a second. I'm almost going to kind of compare side by side, room by room. And I, and I tell you what, there's a couple of things in here that have really impressed me. The fit and finish on the cabinetry. Uh, Chinook's cabinet shop making these absolutely knows what they're doing and speaking of that have have you ever heard somebody say yeah if you buy that camper you better buy us a, a staple gun to put all the trim back up look at this they actually like glue and seal all the trim into those uh, all that crown molding I've never seen a stick and tin camper do anything like that before but there's no like ugly gappy trim no wonky fit and finish or anything like that uh, anywhere in any of the cabinets that I've seen, it is just very well put together. Now we flipped over to the 259 no bunk couples model. And again, now we have lights and isn't it crazy? The life that brings, uh, into the woodwork here. Um, again, the fit and finish here is pretty spectacular. It's interesting to me. They don't put an overhead cabinet right there, but I think it's because this one is designed with the idea of you being able to like utilize the sofa for a direct view entertainment center, if that is your preference right there. But 
you know, normally I don't like the TVs up too high, but considering you're looking over somebody who might be at the dinette, I think it actually makes a lot of sense, so I'm going to give them credit for some good thought there, <laughs> whether they did it intentionally or not. Now, let's talk a couple construction points. You've got sealed edge thermal foil counters all over the place, and I think one of the best qualities of construction on this RV is something you totally can't see, but you can sort of like feel it when you come in. Um, interesting choice going with floor vented heating especially when this is not a cold rated camper. I personally, like you hear me defend floor uh, heat vents all the time in like big fifth wheels. Well, maybe not defend, but explain. I think that is the wrong heating system for this kind of RV. At the same time though, all you, all you gotta do is like throw a runner or something over it and then you don't gotta worry about Skittles and M&Ms dropping down that thing. Anyway, what I was saying is one of the best points of construction on this RV is actually its floor. Most manufacturers use a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor, and that's great. And if you are worried about like a laminated floor breaking down and getting soft over time, uh, you are not gonna have to have to uh, have to have to have to. Yeah, you're not going to need to worry about that on this one. <laughs> Such an idiot. Have to have to. That's sort of like pizza pizza. Anyway, what I was saying before I got distracted by my little Caesars bit, um, the floor. Most manufacturers use a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor. They are using a 7 8 plywood floor on this. Um, that's actually thicker than a lot of toy haulers even use in the garage in a luxury fifth wheel toy hauler. I think the flooring is, you could almost say overkill, but... It could also be argued, is there any such thing as too much construction? And that's a good indication of that. Kind of like if you saw right there, what I just gave you a peek into um, was uh, the, the pocket screwed cabinetry of this. So it's a lumber core where it's wood into screws, but it does have an MDF um, fascia on it with a sticker wrap just to kind of fully complete that. And it's slim, but there is a pantry beside that fridge. And as far as I can see... That refrigerator is all that comes equipped on these. I don't see two different fridge options. Now, I'm actually going to jump back into the bunks here real quick, and then we're going to jump back over to the other trailer. And this is an area, again, I think they passed uh, very well because both bunk windows open for airflow. Something else I really like is you have a mom and dad easy reach lights out switch over here, and notice they're using some nice thick mattresses on this. Uh, each bunk has its own light. Normally, I wouldn't like it all the way down there, but again, there's a light switch for it. Household and USB outlets for both beds is also an extremely uh, well-done little thing. Now, these RVs just arrived, so there's a couple little things like like maybe some bed sheets or whatever that haven't been staged for us uh, quite yet. Now, um, down below the dinette, that is a pedestal-based dinette. I like where that power outlet is over there. I think that could make... Maybe a little coffee maker uh, area or something like that. But you can see there are doors for the storage below the dinette. So that's another area where I think they nailed it pretty darn well. The door side window isn't the world's largest. And I know that the door is wide open on this, actually. Give me just a second. Let me flip over to the other one so you can see what I'm about to talk about. So back in the couples model, you notice they do not put windows in the entry doors on these. Which is uh, something, especially a model like this over here you know, where it doesn't have the door side like cabinets overhead, maybe at least give us a giant picture window there. But actually, at the same time, from a stick and tin standpoint, from a production standpoint, I understand why they're basically just copy and pasting as much as they can. Because the interesting thing is, even though they took the bunks out, they didn't make this one shorter. They did what a lot of people asked. They said, wouldn't it be cool if you just took the bunks out and gave us a massive bathroom? Folks, that is exactly what they did. And notice how they actually fully framed out their entry door for the bathroom so you don't have the little um, backdraft slot above or anything like that. And I don't know if I've ever been in a bathroom that had more space around it like that. Again, sealed edge counters all over the place. That outlet's in a nice spot. I like a little tower. Like that is nicely appointed. Um, again, one of those areas where it's like, mm, you know, they didn't underdo it. I just wish they would have done a little bit more, but it's an easy upgrade. Instead of a four inch fart fan, go with a bigger max air style fan. And since this one is a, um, what, what, uh, so I close the door and I discover 
We have a sink, right? And then I discover we have another sink, right? Why? Why? What is the benefit? Uh, okay, so starting at the driver's side here, um, I guess the idea is this bathroom is so redonkulously large uh, that you could have two people in here kind of doing their thing. Not a whole lot of privacy if you're doing that, but maybe neither here nor there. These campers are six and a half foot tall, by the way, which means that uh, at my height at about 6'3", my head's definitely going to be in that bubble. Uh, looking over here, one of the things this one does very nicely is a just gigantic extra closet over there. But I'm almost wishing they would have brought that all the way over and just made this absolutely extreme level storage. So while I'm meandering my way back over so we can check out the bathroom in the bunkhouse so you can see them side by side, what do you think of that double sink setup in a stick and tin camper like this? Like, is it cool? Is it something people, like I've never seen it so it just caught me off guard. I think I'm still trying to process it over here. Pizza, pizza. Now this is uh, obviously not the <laughs> double sink of uh, stick and tin luxury like we just came from there. Same ceiling height, again, same head in the bubble double toiling trouble there. Uh, I'm gonna give them uh, pass credits for a nicer shower head as well as a full shower surround. And um, over here in the bunkhouse, they went with a shower pan as opposed to a common tub, which is a little bit of a break from the norm. And a lot of times in a floor plane like this, the toilet space isn't great. I was very pleasantly surprised at this one as well. So pass on this bathroom, I think. Now, I know I've bounced back and forth, uh, and I don't normally do that. I normally have, like, a straightforward flow about things. I just wanted to do something different today. Sometimes I need a break from the, the norm. But um, from here forward, it's actually going to be very straightforward and linear. Because basically from the bathroom wall, from the dinette forward, both campers are exactly the same. Well, with one exception, uh, without the overhead cabinet there, we are in the couples model, the, uh, the 259RB. But again, other than that, Moving forward, they're exactly the same here. Again, we're carpetless, have those floor vents. I'm not going to beat that horse too much more to death. I already kind of talked about that anyway. Um, where they, I think they did a good job here is, again, they gave this a full bedroom privacy wall as opposed to just like, well, some campers like the, the Salem, Wildwood, um, and uh, Cherokee, the Gray Wolf version of this, that will be a completely open wall with a curtain. Whereas like somebody like Jayco will do like a half wall with a curtain. Catalina tends to do a fully enclosed wall. You can see that they've done a fully enclosed wall. I think Primetime does a fully enclosed wall. That's again, there's a hundred different versions of something like this. I'm going to leave you some comparison links in the video description where you can see um, campers that compare to the bunk model, campers that compare to this one. Like this is a really good head-to-head -head comparison for something like a uh, 24JS Gray Wolf by Forest River, Cherokee and in case you're curious, yes, both the sofa and the dinette uh, can fold down into a sleeper. You may have noticed um, this additional little um, pool noodle style uh, cushion right there for the dinette. That is if you fold it down into a sleeper, that will help cover everything and make everything fit properly. Good breeze windows in the bedroom. And again, I'm going to give them some serious points. They, they really nailed certain things like just a switch for the lights, household and USB plugs, and... Look at this. What do you think of this? Instead of a drawer where you have to go elbow deep to get to it, they gave us just this lift up panel, which can have stuff in it, or you could put stuff on it. And again, the, the little details on the fit and the finish aspects here, areas where they really, really uh, earn my respect. Now, these are using a 60 by 74 Camp Queen, which is not going to win them any accolades from a lot of folks. Um, I, I left the bedspread off this one just so you can see what you're looking at here. It's not the worst I've ever seen, but it's, it's not, it, it, you know, it's not a sleep number. <laughs> TV hookups across from the bed and a full overhead cabinet as compared to just a shelf. You know, so like I said, everywhere I look in this, I see, oh, you nailed it, but oh, that could be better. But oh, look at that, you know. 
So I don't normally do two trailers side by side at the same time like this. We'll see how it goes. A little bit out of my element, but hey, we're doing it live. But he was not doing it live. Instead, he was doing it from a hotel room while watching Top Chef on mute in the background. Right. Uh, up front, manual tongue jack. Kind of uh, one of those things like, hmm, okay. Well, a power tongue jack's not a hard upgrade. It just, it's almost incredibly uncommon to see things with a manual tongue jack on tandem axles anymore. I do like that nice big stone guard and something people ask for all the time. Like they've really nailed some of the major customer requests. Like they're doing slam latches uh, on a like common class stick and tin over here, but they didn't pair that up with a magnet holdback. So that's to me both a pass and a fail all at the same time. I personally like the stable steps. I know not everybody is a big fan of that. Um, uh, I kind of talked about it inside. I would like to see a door side window, but you know, Salem Wildwood, a lot of brands seem to be doing that nowadays. Uh, I'm not saying because they're doing it, it should be okay. I'm just saying they are. I like the tinted windows and notice once again, how every window opens. That is a serious pass in my book. Um, spinning our way around here, uh, I, I figured I'd show you one baggage door open, one closed, so you could have a, a better view of things as it were. And one of the things that is another major pass on this for me is not just a big front storage compartment, but the fact that it is a true pass-through and it does have equally sized baggage doors on both sides. That is something where I think they did it really nicely. I like the way they did the awning lighting uh, up at the base of the awning. I don't like where they put those outside speakers. That's just me because when I want to listen to Freebird and the speakers are up there, well then so's the neighbors. Now there was one thing I just couldn't get on top of on these RVs, <laughs> and that was the roof. Because as far as I can tell, they neither have optional factory ladders, nor do they have allowances for ladders aftermarket. However, at the time that these words are flying out of my big mouth, I am trying to get that confirmed. This is something over here though, that my eyebrows shut up. I've never seen this on a stick and tin trailer ever. Frankly, I'm not sure I've ever seen it on a towable RV ever. Not just a full outside hot cold utility shower. I also appreciate the fact that they didn't lump the electrical and the water stuff like one on top of the other necessarily, but black and gray tank flushes. I've never seen anything like that before. A gray tank flush isn't something I think you necessarily need a whole lot because there is a lot less solid matter uh, going down that, but um, it, it's not going to hurt. That's one of those things that you'll never regret having, but there's that outside chance that you might regret not having it. So that's another very surprising, like, wow, feature. Wow, you did that. Nice work, guys, you know. But then on the flip side, the underbelly is completely open and exposed, which is just very classic. There's nothing wrong with that. That just means this is a solid three season camper, spring, summer, fall. It is not something that's going to be made for more, uh, you know, early spring, late fall, like uh, more dramatic temperatures as it were. Now, I actually know somebody who's been down to 17 degrees uh, with an exposed underbelly. He also said he was biting his fingernails the entire time he was doing it. And they did things like they uh, opened the water taps on their faucets to keep the water moving in the lines. And speaking of moving, the just general look of this, it, it gives it a feel like it's moving even when it's sitting still, doesn't it? I'll, I'll give it a pass on the, the eye appeal, the curb appeal for sure. Although, again, being fair, what? Hold on, okay. Whoa, I just saw something that blew me away. I am glad I spotted that. Anyway, so the sewer stuff is a little low back here. That's a little concern for me, but this is what blew my mind. This has like a luxury fifth wheel Dexter axle and easy flex suspension shock dampening system for better ride and handling. That is nuts. So what do you think? You like the way they put this bunkhouse together here? Solid, rock solid family camping? Or you don't need the bunks and you just want all the bathroom space in the world here. Either way, you could make this dream your reality. Boom, knew I'd get a dream pun in there somewhere. Yeah.
<laughs> As always, check that link in the video description to see where we have one in stock, what we're asking, and all that jazz. And until next time, folks, thank you so much for continuing to tune in. Take care, stay safe, have fun. Best wishes from Bishes, everyone. Bye.